Wednesday. That's right, a blessed Wednesday. And we thank God for your face in this place called Internet, called Innovation, called Facebook, called Social Media, Twitter, Instagram, oh my God, TikTok. Oh, Lord, what is it that we don't have? Hulu, you name it, CNN, we are live, living, and in color. That's right, all the way from Lexington, Kentucky, Wildcat Country. We thank God for you today, and we're going to get right to the business at hand. We want to continue encouraging you to pray. Amen. Just keep on praying. Prayer still works. That's right. Prayer still works. And so keep on praying because God is able. I said God is able. We also want to encourage you to visit us on the World Wide Web. That's right. All you have to do is put in the search engine, ambc1840.org. Once again, that's ambc1840.org. I want you to visit our site. It is being updated on a regular basis. All of our services, our information, it is loaded. Bible studies, it is loaded. You can go back and hit the review over and over again, month after month, week after week. It is loaded. We also have a blog. That's right, a blog. I want you to join in with us as we discuss the lessons by way of our blog. So sign up with our email newsletter and stay connected. That's right, connecting one another to God and connecting ourselves to a whole world. Now, with that being said, your financial contributions, oh my God, thank God for you want to thank you for sowing a seed and continuing to sow a seed in the mission and ministry of Antioch Baptist Church Incorporated. We are launching our international ministry. That's right. We are going global. Somebody say global. You will see a change in the decor. Uh, our banner, our global banner is being developed even as I speak. Uh, we're going to have global villages and global videos of people that we're reaching. And we want you to be a part of our global expansion. That's right, our global expansion. You may not be able to travel all over the world, but your finances can travel. That's right. And so with that being said, you can download our online giving app. It's safe and secure. Just simply type in your mobile device, your laptop, your iPad, or whatever easy reader, whatever you may have. Type in Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, Givelify.com. Givelify.com. When you key in Givelify.com, download that out. It's safe and secure. And then you will put in the church's Name Antioch Missionary Baptist Church here in Lexington on Ferguson Street. So the information automatically comes up and you will see the various categories to give. So a seed. 10% of your stimulus check belongs to the Lord. Oh, glory. Watch out, preacher. 10% of your income belongs to the Lord. Glory to his name. I want to see you blessed. That's right. I want to see you blessed. And God will help to alleviate some of your stress. His blessings is to help you in your stress and distress. Oh, yeah. The more you are blessed, the less stress. The more you are blessed, the less distress. Amen. You won't be stress-free in this life. No. But the God I serve is a God who will preserve you. Now, let us prepare for our Bible study on today. And as we prepare, be mindful of these announcements and many others. And we'll be back again to share with you later this evening for round two. We have two services every Wednesday, around 12.30 and then around 6.30. Every Wednesday, we try to come with you with a fresh rain of word. Now for the next 35 minutes, if you're not too mean, and if you really, really wanna hear what God is saying, I want you to open your Bible 
to the book of Genesis, chapter 21 and 22. The book of Genesis, chapter 21 and 22. We are studying the whole word for the whole world for the whole man. That's right. We're going to be studying and continue studying the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And if the Lord say so, amen. I want to see you at the end of this completion. And if you've been a part of these series from point A all the way through Revelation, we're going to send you a certificate. That's right. Now, God knows. All right. You know, the Bible says that God hates a lying tongue. But God knows your heart, as he does. So again, for those of you that have been with us, amen. Keep on keeping on. We keep a little log here on our online services. Kind of idea about who's actually chiming in. And if you're not one of our members of our Facebook group, inboxes, amen. And we'll be glad to add you. But we only do that which is decently and in order. You might want to Consider what type of postings, that's right, kind of postings that you are airing out. So as we turn to Genesis, chapter 21 and 22, pray with me. Father God, thank you for today and thank you for your new mercies. Thank you for your grace, your love, and your kindness. Now may thy word have free course. We pray for anointing to fall afresh, O oh God. Let thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, let's look at the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, the book of origin. Let's look at it. And one has stated that if you want to discover every doctrine that's in the Bible, if you want to see where the footprint of every doctrine in the entire Bible can be found, the seed plot for all teachings in the Bible, you're going to find in Genesis. That's right. From evangelization to redemption to sanctification to commandments, you name it, the blood of Jesus. Genesis points to Calvary. Oh, yes, it does. Points to the Messiah. And so today we're going to prayerfully look at Genesis chapter 21 and 22. We're going to pick up right there where we left off. And let's come on now. Let's get on the Bible bus. Now you push the share button right now. Push that share button on your mobile device, push that share button, share with a friend, share with someone, just push that share button and let them know that Reverend Tyler is live, living, and in color, and let's walk through the Bible. Push that share. Invite someone. Amen. Invite someone. Don't you determine for them if they want to view it or not. You just plant the seed. Let them respond. Because there was a time somebody invited you. Oh, glory. And somebody needs to hear this word today, and God is going to use you to reach that somebody. And they're going to say, you know what, I'm so glad you shared that Bible study with me. I needed that. Now, as you push your share button and share with others, we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 21, and we're going to pick up at verse 22. We've already covered the birth of Isaac, chapter 21, verses 1 through 8. We covered in Genesis chapter 21, verse 9 through 16, baby mama drama in the home of Abraham. <laughs> That's right. The bond woman and her son, Hagar, and you got it. Ishmael have been kicked out of the house. Then in chapter 
21 of Genesis, verse 17 through 21, we find the angel of God appearing in the middle of the wilderness, in the middle of nowhere, and reassuring Hagar and Ishmael that God is a God who keeps his promises. He's a covenant God. And God established with them that the child would be blessed because the child is Abraham's son, although this child is not the promised seed child. Isaac is the promised seed. Ishmael represents the flesh. And God takes no pleasure in the flesh, but due to Abraham and this child being a seed of Abraham, the Lord had promised Abraham that he would bless his seed. But only the promised seed Oh, glory to his name, would be Isaac. Isaac is the promised seed, not Ishmael. And so they're out there in the wilderness at the brink and point of death. Starvation, dehydration has kicked in. And the angel, God, appears to them and reassures them that he shall live and not die and provides water and nourishment for him and he grows up and establishes what is called the Arab nation. The Arab nation. That's Ishmael, all right? Now we come to the 22nd verse of Genesis chapter 22. Oh, glory to his name. And again, if you want to journey with us throughout the entire Bible, no gimmicks, no entertainment. We're just going to open the Bible and just read it and share with you what the Lord puts on our heart. And as I go through it, I pray it will go through you as it is going through me. Oh, glory to his name. Glory to his name. We need the pure, unadulterated word of God. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Now, let's read together verses 22 34, chapter 21 of Genesis, and then we'll highlight and move on to chapter 22. Are you ready? Amen. Everybody on board the Bible bus? Let's go. And it came to pass at that time that Ambilimech and Phichor, the chief captain of his host, spoke unto Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. Mm, good God Almighty. Now therefore swear unto me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me, nor my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto you, you shall do unto me and to the land wherein you have sojourned. And Abraham said, I swear. And Abraham reproved Ambilimech because of a well of water which Ambilimech's servant had violently taken away. And Abilimech said, I do not know who has done this thing, neither did you tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but today. And Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave it unto Abilimech, and both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abilimech said unto Abraham, What do these seven ewe lambs mean, which you have sent by themselves? And Abraham said, For these seven ewe lambs shall you take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me that I have dug this well. Verse 31, Genesis chapter 21. Look at verse 31. Wherefore he called the place Beersheba, because there they did swear both of them. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba, then Ambilimech rose up and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Phil Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God, Elohim. That's right, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistine land many days. Hmm. All right, now, let's go to verse 32. 
Let's look at this. We're practical. There's nothing deep about it, so we're not going to try to dig deep. One writer states that when the word of God, mm, glory to his name, makes common sense, seek no other sense, or you'll have nonsense. Tweak that. Watch this. Abraham and Abilamech are at a particular crossroads, if you would, and it could have went one way or the other. Could have went, it could have turned into something that would not have been productive for Abraham or for Abilamech more so. And you have people that don't seek to reconcile in these days. You know, whatever happened to reconciliation? All of this shooting and killing, a lot of it, and I know not all, but a lot of it, I'm talking black on black crime now, is due to retaliation. You know, there is no sitting down. There is no reconciliation. A lot of people that separate and going about their ways and even families have been divided simply because we fail to reconcile our differences, to sit down. Some things can be worked out, but it takes two. It takes two. And you have to know your tolerance. You have to know where you are in your walk with God and with others. Maybe God is speaking to someone out there. And maybe God is saying to you, before you go to war, before you go to the next level, try to reconcile. Now, when you've tried, give it at your best. That's all that God has required of you to do. But God determines the outcome. Remember that. Ambilimech is a smart man. And he's got enough sense to know that the favor of God is up on Abraham. Woo! Good God Almighty. Isn't that something? When somebody can watch you and, amen, observe you and notice how fruit is being birthed, by way of your presence and you are impregnated with the possibilities of divine favor from generation to generation and someone is watching and observing how the Lord is blessing you. Amen. And there may be some odds, but instead of challenging you and trying to create war and chaos and issues in your life and in your ministry, they say, you know what, I want to sit down and talk to you. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. And notice what he said in verse 22, Abilamech wants a covenant of extension. In other words, as he's sitting down with Abraham, he said, man, I, I pray that, that me and you can sit down and work this out because I know that if I start a fight with you, Good God Almighty, I'm starting a fight with God. You know, sometimes we don't realize <laughs> that when you mess with God's child, good God Almighty, huh? When you cause problems in the life of a child of God, don't you know you just picked a battle you can't win? God will take care of his own. The hand of the Lord is upon Abraham, favors upon him, and... Um, and Billy Mac is smart enough to see that and respect that and says, you know what? I don't want God to deal with me. Mm -mm. I want to be able to sit down with you. Look at that. And uh, I want you to share some kindness with me, some favor with me. I guess Am Billy Mac might have been thinking, you know, I got enough problems. I don't need no more problems. I've got enough to deal with in my life right now. I, got enough, I don't need no more. I'm at the place and point, and you need to get there if you're not there, where I'm trying to live peacefully, to keep going forward, and to receive what God has for me. Mm. And Abraham said, yes, let's look at verse 22, 24, and 25. Abraham said, I swear. What, else, what he's saying is, we're going to sit down and come to a covenant agreement. Look at that. See, and, like I said, Ambilimech recognized that the power of God, the favor of God was with Abraham and he wanted to be on the positive side 
of that power, that favor. Not the negative, but the po positive side. You know, there are some folk that don't care nothing about the positive side. Uh-uh. No, no. No, they don't. And you can't tell them nothing. They have to learn the hard way. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of the will of the water. Evidently, the ownership of wells in that part of the world was guarded possession. In other words, they were such a high commodity, essential for survival, huh? that water wells were guarded as private property, and if by chance that you trespassed and invaded, that was serious. That was serious business because it was a life source. Are y'all praying with me? It was a life source. And uh, he was not aware of the situation. Now, Billy McMullen was not aware of it, but some of his people, his servants, had violated this particular area of land and this water well that belonged to Abraham. And I love how Abraham sits down and works it out. They sit down and make a covenant. The amulet, these, these ewe lambs, these animals are a symbol of the covenant. So they use these animals, these lambs, and they sacrifice them as a binding covenant agreement. And notice that Abraham names the place Beersheba. It's a Hebrew word for swearing. Hmm? It means to be seven, to be confirmed by seven. Seven is the number of completion. All right? Are y'all praying with me? I'm trying to teach you something. Now, they made a covenant. And Abimelech rose up, his chief captain, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. All right? Abraham does something else significant. He plants a tree, a grove, it says in verse 31. And he called the name. On there he called on the name of the Lord as a memory. The Lord is capitalized in my Bible. But notice says the Lord comment the everlasting God. Oh yeah, he's, he's everlasting from everlasting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Abraham here refers to Jehovah as L-O-L-O-M. Huh? L-O-L. That's right. Which means the everlasting God. Mm. Good God Almighty. And the Bible says that he sojourned there many days. Many writers states that the patriotic Character we know as Abraham, the friend of God, is going to live there in that land until he dies. Now we come to Isaac 20, we come to chapter 22, we're going to talk about Isaac. Now let's read verses 1 through 8 of chapter 22 of Genesis. Now we're moving fast, so y'all stay, make sure you buckle up. All right, here we go. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, I am here. And he said, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mount, one of the mountains, which I will tell you. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his animal, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clayed the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Now we studied this lesson in Sunday school many, many, many times over and over again. Watch this. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the ass, and I and the lamb and the lad will go yonder and worship. Notice that, and come on, 
again unto you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hands and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son. Woo! Good God Almighty. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. That's the first eight verses, chapter 22. Now, I want to highlight these eight verses, and when we come back, I'll be back. We're going to go on and talk about the ram and the covenant confirmed in the rest of this chapter. Let's look at these verses. Look at these verses. It's rich, historical. Hmm? Abraham had been praying for a child. And God promised Abraham that through Isaac, the promised seed, good God Almighty, nations would come forth. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Abraham, I'm a blessed that boy. Oh, yes, I am. He's going to have 12 boys that's going to give birth to 12 nations. Woo! Good God Almighty. Oh, glory to his name. Yes, sir. 12 tribes, and these 12 tribes shall produce nations and nations and nations. My people will come from the promised seed of your child. And Abraham, just look up. Can you count the stars? Can you number and count the stars of the grain of sand on the seashore? So shall your seed be. Now he promised him that many years later before this boy was born. Now we find good God Almighty, y'all, I'm trying to hold myself, that the Lord is putting Abraham to a test. The word temp means test. Now he's not doing this for himself because God already knows. Yeah, he already knows. So he's not doing this to find out what's in Abraham. He knows what's in Abraham, but he's doing it for Abraham so Abraham can discover what's in Abraham. You missed it. See, oftentimes when God puts us to a test, we think it's to prove something to God. No, 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 no. God is doing it to reveal something to you about you. Go on and take the test. Ooh, that'll preach. Go on and take the test. Secondly, I learned here, be careful what you ask for. Because <laughs> whenever the Lord blesses you, there will be a testing period. Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. See, some people get excited over the blessing. And that's fine, fine. Celebrate. Enjoy your blessing. But with the blessing is a testing. Oh, glory to his name. And the greater the blessing, the greater the testing. I think I said something. Huh? The higher the level, the greater the devil. You're going to be tested. Won't be blessed. Prepare for the test. Many times we see what others have. And man, how come I don't have a house like that? Or a promotion like that? Or a car like that? Or a family like this? Or a spouse like that? Or a church like this? Huh? A prestige or faithfulness like this. You know, how come I don't have the faith of Job? Well, do you want the faith of Job? Then you got to be willing to endure the test of Job. You don't hear me today. Pray for a son. Now the Lord's putting him to a test. It's right here in chapter 22 of Genesis. His only boy of the promise, the promised seed, Isaac. Yeah, yeah. 
Sarah's firstborn child. That's right. Sarah's boy. As laughter. You got to keep in mind his name means what? Laughter. God laughs at the enemy's attacks. You ought to laugh at the devil sometime when he comes at you. Just laugh at him. Say, man, I see what you're doing. But God is going to mess you up for trying to mess me up. Sometimes you just laugh at your enemy. Just look at him start laughing. Say, yeah, yeah. Watch this. Here we go. Did you not know it's an honor to be tested and tried by God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We find here in verse 2, he says, whom you love. One writer states, this is one of the first times in the Holy Writ you find the mention of love in this content, in this content, in the Bible. Abraham, I know you love him. Look at that. I know you love him. And I know he loves you. Bring him to Moriah. What does Moriah mean? Bring him to Mount Moriah. Moriah, yes, Moriah, bring him. Because Moriah means Jehovah, the provider. See, everything that God does, he has an order and a purpose for it. God doesn't do things just to be doing them. When God makes a move and when God gives direction, there's an order and a purpose. There's a plan. And we don't always see it, but believe it. Watch this. Bring him to the place where I provide. You're going to learn that I don't only provide in the east, in the west, and north, and the south. But wherever my presence is, I'm a provider. And when you leave this mountain, you will leave here knowing that I am Jehovah, the provider. I am God, the provider. I'm the one who provides. Even when you don't see the provision. Good God Almighty. God provides. Yeah, 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 yeah. God's able, I'll tell you. He says, go to the land of Moriah. And there I want you to up there and offer him there. That's what it said. For a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll tell you. Offer him there. Now. The object of this lesson would have us to know that God is a God of redemption. Watch this. See, we get the lesson mixed up. He is a God that redeems us. Huh? Oh, yes, he does. And he's going to redeem mankind by death. His son, Jesus Christ. See, without the cross, we can't be redeemed. Uh-uh. Stay with me. Stay with me. So his son Isaac is not only the son of Abraham, but he's a type of Christ. See what God is doing? You missed it. The cross in Calvary was a place of humiliation and death on that old rugged cross, but it was also an hour in which God was providing. You still didn't catch it. Because if Jesus had not hung on the cross, salvation could not have been provided. So whatever God is moving and operating and there's order and purpose and God is in the midst, I promise you, you're going to find out that God is a provider. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. Now, God was not like the other gods. The other gods, glory, hallelujah, required human sacrifice. It was burning children on the altar of Moloch, sacrificing. Heathens had some crazy, still do today. Yeah, yeah. And God never required, I want you to watch this, Mankind to offer human sacrifices. No, not to him. No, oh yeah, no. Animal, yes, but human, no, 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 not God. 
No, no, not God. So that's one thing I want you to highlight. All right? So Abraham, look, verse 4, on the third day, what's that share? Abraham, good God of mine. You got you to gotta catch this. You got to catch this. In obedience, responds to God. Huh? Because verse 3 says, and early in the morning he rose up. See, some of y'all wouldn't have done it. He got up. The Lord said, now I want you to do it. Abraham didn't sleep in. No, he didn't go back here and there. He got up and headed on his journey. Three days. This was probably the longest three days of his life. What's he thinking about? I got to take my son up here and offer him. He's trying to understand God because God has already told him that he's going to bless his seed. So Abraham is trying to figure out what in the world is God doing. You ever been there where God gives you a strange commandment, a strange assignment, huh? And you can't figure it out and you know what God has promised and you're just trying to walk by faith. But at the same token, you're human and you're trying to understand, Lord, what's going on? Abraham spent three days on this journey. And I believe he pondered in his heart over and over again, Lord, you promised me a child and the child would be a child that would birth a nation. Now you're telling me to come up to a mountain and offer a burnt sacrifice, an offering. I don't understand. But he kept walking by faith because Abraham believed God. See that? God's putting him to the test. He just kept on, he headed to the mountain. See, some of us went to wind and said, no, that ain't God speaking to me. That's got to be the devil. But see, Abraham knew the difference between the voice of God, watch this, and the voice of Lucifer. And sadly to say, there are some voices, amen, good God, glory to God, hallelujah. Some voices we don't need to heed nor take, amen, action upon. And sadly to say, there are many church going folk who don't know the voice of the shepherd versus the voice, watch this, of a hireling. No, they don't. Uh-uh. People jump off into anything and say, well, it's on my heart. The Lord put this on my heart. You ought to quit lying on, on the Lord. A whole lot of stuff we do ain't fair. No, it ain't fair to the Holy Spirit. And we say to the Lord, you ought to be honest. You know, and some people say, well, I know this is probably wrong and the Lord going to get me for it. Well, at least they're honest about it. And you're right. He is going to get you for it. If he didn't tell you to do it, he's going to get all of us. Hello. Glory to his name. So Abraham heads on, y'all. There he goes. I got about five minutes and I'm done. He's headed off. Just like the Lord told him. <laughs> got a couple of young men with him. Got the animal. And when he gets to the place... Gets close. Notice what he said. This is faith. We see faith in action when Abraham obeys God by gathering everything and taking off the next morning. We see faith in action by Abraham walking by faith. Look at it. Walking by faith three days on a three-day journey. Didn't turn around. Didn't take a detour. Didn't abort the mission, but kept on marching. See, sometimes you just got to keep on marching. You don't know what it's going to, how the outcome is going to be, but you know God is going to meet you there and God is going to provide an answer or provide, amen, a way out or provide provisions. He's going to give you some type of, amen, sign or some type of closure because God is not going to send you on a mission and not reveal himself in some way. You may not catch all of it. You may not be able to comprehend and he don't have, he's not obligated to tell you nothing. He ain't got to explain nothing. If God says do it, you just trust him and never doubt. A lot of times the Lord has directed me to do some things that ain't never explained unto me. He's not obligated to explain anything to us. God is a God that we ought to trust him when we can't track him. And when we can't trace him. And when we can't understand him. Are y'all listening to me? And when we can't see clearly, trust in the Lord and lean not to thy own understanding. Yeah. Ah. They that come to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are you seeking God? Oh, glory to his name. 
You ain't got to understand everything. You ain't got to analyze everything. You don't need to figure everything out. Just trust the one that woke you up this morning. Abraham's marching by faith. I don't know why I get happy every time I get ready to close Bible study. I don't need a whole lot to get happy. I don't need an organ or a choir. Amen. I don't need a supporting cast. As long as I got goodness and mercy following me in all the days of my life, I know <laughs> it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. He's walking by faith. Pretty sure Sarah didn't understand why he was taking the boy up to Mount Moriah. Can you imagine that? He's got to deal with his wife, the mother. So me and the boy have to go up to the mountain. God said, bring him for an offering. Can you, can you imagine the mother probably, the wife probably upset with Abraham? She probably talked bad to him. I don't know. I wasn't there. This is just me saying it. But can you imagine as a mother, for those of you that are mothers, that your husband comes in and says, we got to take our only boy to Mount Moriah, a three-day journey. And you respond by saying, what for? Because the Lord said, bring him so we can offer a sacrifice. Can you imagine domestic violence, 911, and everybody else would have been called? Not my child. He no, the Lord didn't tell you that. No, no you'd have gone crazy. You'd have gone fanatical. You're a religious freak. Can you imagine? See, that's why it pays. Good God Almighty to make sure you hooked up with somebody who is spiritual and that loves the Lord. Amen. Oh, glory to his name. So that God can speak to them. I believe that God dealt with Sarah. I'm not saying it was no fight, an argument in the house of Abraham, but I believe God dealt with her because keep in mind, keep in mind now, this is Isaac here. Abraham loved Isaac, but so did Sarah. Don't you get that twisted? And there's nothing like a mother's love for a child, but Abraham is still going by faith. Woo! Glory. As they get closer, he tells the young men, said, now y'all, we get a little closer here. Y'all gonna have to remain down this way. Y'all gonna have to remain at the lower part. And notice what it says in verse 5. Faith, y'all. Watch this. He said, I and the lad, my son, we're going up yonder and worship. Now watch this. And he says, and come to you again. We're going to go up here. You don't hear me. We're going to go up here. I said, you don't hear me. We're going to go up together. And we're coming back down together. Because I just believe that God. He ain't, he ain't showed me nothing just to come and walk by faith. But I believe that my son is coming back with me. Oh, glory to his name. Abraham took the offering, the wood. Laid it upon his son Isaac, took the fire in his hand, and a knife, and they both, they go up together. Lord have mercy. Now keep in mind that Isaac is not a little boy. We get that mixed up. Isaac's a young man. Hmm? No, he ain't no little boy. And we see these little stories how it shows Isaac as a little bitty old boy. No, he's not no little boy. He's a young man. Yeah, don't miss this. They go on up together, and Isaac talks to his dad. We're closing. I'm closing. He said, Daddy, I, I'm getting a little concerned. <laughs> yeah, I guess I would have too if I'd been Isaac. What about you? He said, I see we got wood, and uh, we got rope, and we got a knife. We got the elements to make the fire. And Isaac said, but there's something I don't see. You're going to catch this in a minute. Daddy, I don't see. I'm looking, but where's the sacrifice? Daddy, I see the wood and, and everything else. And there's the mountain. And we're going to erect an altar. And we got everything else. But, but where's the sacrifice? I see everything else. Oh, y'all missing. Y'all missing. Faith, help me Hebrews, good God Almighty, I wish I had a Bible read out there, is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. Tweet that. Faith and sight don't operate in the same dimension. Let me try it again. If you can see it, why hope for it? Hmm? If you can see it, why do you need faith? That's a problem. Sight has been our issue because what we don't see, we don't believe. Old folks, you said all the time, believe half of what you hear and part of what you see. And if you do see it, make sure you see it right. You missed it. Isaac said, I don't see it, but Abraham responds. My son, good God Almighty. Woo, I'm getting happy. My son, I don't see it either. But let me tell you what I believe. God will provide. That's right there in verse 8. God's going to make sure that whatever we need, he's going to supply. All we have to do is keep on walking by faith and keep walking in obedience and he's going to make this thing happen. Oh, glory to his name. He ain't explained nothing to me, boy. He hasn't laid out the agenda clearly. I can't see clearly. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know, but I know the Lord's going to provide himself a lamb because he told me to come here and offer, make an offering unto him. That's what he said. This is all about him. And he's working on me. He's working on me. But I know what he promised he promised that you would be the seed that would produce a nation and he ain't let me down yet, boy. So however he's going to work it out, I don't know all I know <laughs> that he will provide himself. It's right there, y'all. Verse 8. Yeah. I got I to gotta settle down. I didn't got happy. Verse 8, verse 22. And when he told them that, the Bible says they both went on up together. They're walking by faith. On the journey of life, this Christian journey, be careful who you walk with on certain journeys. Yeah, everybody can't walk every pathway and every journey with you. Uh-uh, no, everybody can't. Only certain ones can walk with you so far. Only certain ones can walk through fire. Only certain ones can walk through hard times. Only certain ones can walk with you through your pain and your anguish. Only certain ones can walk with you. Everybody can't walk with you when you're walking by faith. Not everybody. Uh-uh. Got to be careful. Some folk will throw you off. Some folk will get you distracted. Huh? Some folk will cause you to miss your blessing. Say, well, they need my support. You can't support everything. Uh-uh. Some things you got to say, uh-uh, can't support that. I love my children to death. Oh, yes, I do. All four of them, including my three grandchildren. And they know I'll support them. But there are some things I tell them, uh-uh, can't support that. No, not going to do it. I love you. I'm here for you. But uh-uh. Won't be supporting that. No, no. Uh-uh. No. See, certain things you got to draw a line even when it comes to those dearest to your heart. Oh, you better hear me today. I said you better hear me today. God is speaking to you. God is speaking to me. Walking through the Bible as the Bible walks through us. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but whoo, good God Almighty. What a joy, what a joy it is to study the word. Let the word catch you on fire. Huh? Yeah. Let the word catch you on fire. Well, my time is up. Thank you for yours. I want to extend to you the plan of salvation. It's like A, B, and C. A, you got to acknowledge you're a sinner. B, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. C, confess with your mouth. If you're willing to do that, we're going to pray with you now. Looking for a church home, we invite you to choose the church of your choice as God directs you. Love to have you here. But if God directs you to go and join a church, make sure it's a Bible-believing church. Oh, yeah, where the pastor, the preacher is opening up the word and sharing with you the word. Philosophies won't get it. Human viewpoints won't get it. Charisma won't get it. Gimmicks won't get it. Hello, somebody. Emotionalism won't get it. Traditionalism won't get it. We need the pure, unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. 
The faith that has once been delivered unto the saints, Jude said. Ain't nothing else coming. <laughs> this is, here it is right here. Here it is. Get in the church that's teaching it, and the Holy Spirit is in charge. Remember that. Where the Word of God is being taught, and the Holy Spirit, that's right, is in charge. Is moving throughout that congregation. I promise the Lord will bless you. If you're willing to acknowledge and believe and confess, let me pray with you. We're going to intercede on behalf of others as well. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those that are acknowledging, believing, and confessing. And we pray, oh God, for our nation. We pray, oh God, for those that are yet to hear this message this, and study this lesson. They may play it later. We intercede on behalf of those who are not watching. We thank you, O oh God, for the two or three that have joined us today. And Lord, we're not overly concerned about anything that you're not concerned about. <laughs> so, Lord God, we thank you for what you've done and what you are doing. We love you dearly in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. Amen. See you. Lord's Wheel Creek don't rise. I'll be back this evening at 6.30. Amen. For class number two for the 6.30 class. We're going to carry them through Genesis chapter 22 and get ready for chapter 23. Sunday morning, 9 o'clock a.m. is our Sunday school hour. You're welcome to come and be a part by physical or by, that's right, innovation. I'm asking all leaders to come on out to Sunday school. We open the doors of the church physically where you can come, wear your mask. Everybody's invited. Then Sunday morning at 10, 15 a.m., there's a word from the Lord. Oh, yes, there is a fresh word from the Lord. I want you to come and be a part of that as the Lord pours into me that I may pour out to you. Make sure you keep in mind that the church anniversary, Antioch will be 95 years old. That's right, 95. Good God Almighty. Some churches ain't been around 95 minutes. But Antioch, congregation, 95 years, will celebrate a 95th birthday the fourth Sunday in May. That's right, fourth Sunday in May. Oh, what a time, what a time. And then on the first Sunday in June, first Sunday in June, first Sunday in June, we're opening the doors of the physical building of Antioch and inviting the members and community to come. Oh, it's going to be a packed house. And we only can pack it 50%. <laughs> That's how much we can pack it because of the pandemic. So I advise you to get here early. That's right. We're going to put people in the pews and people in the choir loss. And maybe put a chair or two down here. We're going to spread you out. But we can only max it out 50% occupancy. That's right. So get here early. First Sunday in June. We'd love to see you. And as we move along, we're going to continue to grow as the Lord leads us. God bless you. We love you in the Lord. I'm here because of God's grace and mercy. And I thank God that I'm here also for you. Bless you. Let us now recite our mission statement as we close out for this day. Jesus is our sender. Our message is the gospel. Our target audience, we're trying to reach the lost, the least, and the left out. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank God for you. Have a beautiful afternoon is my prayer.